Hello, welcome back. We're playing more Dream Daddy. Uh, today we're going to be dating Hugo. Uh, we know that Hugo is a teacher. He's one of our daughter's teachers and he has a somewhat troubled son. Um, so yeah, we will see how uh, this date goes with Hugo. I navigate to Hugo's dad book page and type out a message. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Wanna, wanna hang out sometime? I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. I'm so glad you messaged me. I definitely want to hang out sometime, but I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today and one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you could come by and replace them? Uh-oh. I think about, oh, uh, I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm gonna be honest with you here. It's the middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about it for a moment. Man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for. And they're in middle school, arguably the worst age to be. Amanda silently trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, how was, how was middle school for you? Bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and, gener and being generally terrible. Oh. True. Everyone sucks, no self-awareness. It's just a bunch of hormonal te teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 plus hours a week, doing long division and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day, top 40s pop. Middle schoolers should be avoided at all costs. What was your middle school experience like? Can't, wasn't my cup of tea, I can tell you that much. I had my first crush in middle school and I'm still bitter about it. Alexis Stuggs, you hurt me and I'll never forget. What did she do to you? I stare off into middle distance, remembering the 24 hours that we dated and the three times we held hands between class periods. Then I remembered the bitter betrayal, her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham. Him making me eat, eat dirt in front of her. I don't want to talk about it. See, middle schoolers are reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle, his middle school class to the aquarium. Just wanted, just wanted to know what I was in for. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? The last field trip I got to go on was, was to the clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder. They gave us square pizza at a clam chowder factory. Oh, is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? No, it's because Bobby Wellingham threw up in one of the vats of clam chowder, and I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Right, let's leave that, that story firmly in the past. Anyway, you should just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he, he could really use the help. Plus you get to hang out with cool fish. Amanda, I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. What, are you worried that a whale is going to pop out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Don't you put fear in my heart. Well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. Then it's settled. Penguins outweigh, outweigh fear of ocean. I sit back down at the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and, I, and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school buses have, have beaten me there. Pre-teens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. Uh. Hugo jogs up to me, looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo. I don't know. It's been a debacle all morning. We're shorthanded that most of the kids won't stop screaming, as I'm sure you know is the case with, with all middle schoolers. I lived through Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Great. Well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over here. Hugo walks me over to a gaggle of preteens who were all sitting on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups, so we're off to a good start. That's right, they have phones now. Hmm. Youths. Can you guys put your phones away? All of the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo. They then go back to texting. At least they're quiet. Too quiet. These guys are up to something, I can feel it. There's no way, they're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces, braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school after all. Hmm. We'll see. 
The classes start filling into the aquarium, and Hugo hands out massive stapled packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. The kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Hey. Honestly, it's just busy work so that the teachers can have a moment's reprieve. I think one of the questions asks them to sit quietly for 10 minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks, I like that. Wait, I thought you were an, an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? Oh. We just did a unit, a unit on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite like introducing kids to the futile perseverance of the human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Oh. It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal selection of trop tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while, while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with brightly colored f fish. Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long spines. Ah. That right there is a lionfish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Whoa. Ah. Their spines are venomous too. Nature is hardcore. You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy-looking fish hanging near out near the bottom of the tank. Mm. That's a stonefish, the most venomous fish in the world. And they just, like, keep it here? Oh, they're relatively harmless as long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Oh. Tissue necrosis. This is so romantic. <laughs> cool. Nature is wild. Man, Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the over overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, see that fish over there? Um. That one? Yeah, that's the, that's the, uh, which of these sounds like a real fish? I'm gonna go with humphead Ras Ras Rasa? Rasp? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Did you know that... Oh. Uh... Political fish trivia. That's curious. Uh, let's try psychiatric fish trivia. This is, this is the only species of fish known to, known to develop clinical depression. Mm -hmm. Wait, are you serious? I don't think I'm serious, so I'm gonna go with absolutely not. I'm playing it for the gag here. Yes. Ha, good one. We lead the kids to another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around in a massive floor-to-ceiling aquarium. The kids begin trying to take selfies with the sharks. Hugo leaves my side to separate two kids who started fighting over a Capri Sun. I walk around the room, reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside of the enclosure. After a while, I look around and see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry, hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? Hmm. We can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. A great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It truly is fascinating to be able to observe it in a setting such as this. He is super horny for that. Uh, that's a very astute point, Dead Tasmo. We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of, of marine life. We eventually make our way to the, to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. I stand around the edges of the tank and keep, keep a weary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well-moisturized well hands. Hugo rolls up his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to pet some rays, Dead Tasmo? Oh, I think I'm good. I don't really... I think I should just stay over here and admi admire them from, from a respectable distance. Come on, it'll be fun. And, and informative. Don't make fun of me, but 
I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of those things are, but I get the feeling they will probably bite me and my delicious hands if, if given the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have had their barbs removed, the horseshoe crabs only eat little clams, and the anemones are perfectly safe to touch. Against my better, against my better judgment, I approach the tank. Slowly dipping my hand, hand into the cold water, I touch, I touch a stingray as it glides past me. See, not so bad. It feels like fun, slimy leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? I dive my hand back into the touch tank with, with renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel the hard carapace of a horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo's as, as we reach for the same anemone. I pull away, blushing. Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just get a little carried away some to... Wait. That girl over there, over there looks suspicious. Why is that? Oh. Are backpacks usually that wet? Hold on. Susan! Susan, get back here! Hugo runs after a middle schooler and catches her before she can make, t make it to the exit. Want to tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks? Want to, want to tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think I think you might need a bad cop. Look, kid. Oh <laughs> God, we don't have time for <coughs> we don't have time for games here. Whatever it is, it goes back back into into the touch tank now. You're you're not a teacher. You you can't tell me what to do. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time, we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book, book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Sweet Manchego. Hugo leans down and unzips the backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scuttles out and across the floor. An employee swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back in the tank. She gives us a dis disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? God damn it, Susan! I was trying to free him. To where? Outside? Where he was gonna die? Eh. Susan, go, go, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, and hands where we can see him. Susan sulks off, leaving me, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gives me a pat on the, on the shoulder. Hmm. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks. Sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life surround us. Look over here. Hugo points to some seahorses gathered at, a, at the bottom of a tank. One of them is in, in the middle of giving birth. Oh. That's actually, actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur from the students. They just jump back on their phones. Mm. Fun fact, male seahorses can, can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. Man, we thought we, we had it hard. Mm. I wonder if they have to deal with their kids' awkward te teenage years too. All, however, many thousand of them. You seem to know a lot about mar marine life, Hugo. It's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We, we should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way to, over to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic ex exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Oh. Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yes. Penguins. Our group of kids run around the exhibit. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem, seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. What? Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin enclosure. <laughs> Wait, just kidding, it's very bad. 
Is it one of ours? Hmm. It most certainly is. Molly Henderson, Susan fr Susan's friend. I look over to, over to the penguins and see a d determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of, the, one of the employees. Over on one side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exhibit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop her before the staff, the staff sees and bans our school for, school for life. Hugo looks around. I'll create a distraction. Is this gonna be a mini game? Hugo runs toward the puffin exhibit and address, addresses the entire room. Everybody, 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 I, I have an announcement. The whole room turns towards Hugo. Um, here's a few facts that you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is this is my shot. I run in, into the enclosure and am greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey. The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy, I just end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Contrary to popular belief, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand, understand some confusion when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting, the, I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even going to go? They're, go they're gonna live in my closet. Look, I just don't even have time to argue about this. We're, we, we gotta get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. Little known fact is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, with some exceptions. So they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Uh, I kind of just want to lay down the law here. Like, these kids are ridiculous. I prepare to raise my voice at Molly and then hesitate. Is it weird for me to raise my voice at a stranger's kid? Like, is it a parent parenting faux pas or something? It's a fair point. Money. Give me money. I will give you $20, $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, well, give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well, I have $12 and, and some change. Also, there's a button here. Is that enough? Pay me the other rate later and we have a deal. We, we move to shake on her arrangement before I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on, our, on their, way, their way out of the enclosure. We're gonna have to block these birds. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, what am I, what am I shooting at the penguins? Is that a... Is it just a hand? Ah. Sorry, penguins, this feels very violent suddenly. Ah. No. One got out, I think. Ah! <laughs> Penguin escapes! This is... What? <laughs> what is happening? Oh god. Yeah, okay, it's, it's a hand I'm shooting. What? Okay. Seven penguins escaped. That's... Considering what I was dealing with there, I don't think that's too bad. Bribery works. Okay. Whew. Glad that's over. Just in time, too. Looks like Hugo is wrapping up his diversionary penguin speech. And that's why I think that penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots us from across the way and runs over. Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that the penguins can only survive in arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Well, 
Um, it was the thought that counts. No, Molly, it, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me eight dollars. I most certainly do not, Molly. Sweet man, <laughs> what? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan. I suppose so that they can compare animal thief notes. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not you're not off the hook, Molly. Ah. Dad Tasmo, did you just bribe a child? Um You can't play by the rules when there's penguins on the line. Listen, man, we've all done dark things in our lives. I'm not the young, bright eyed youth, youth I used to be. That person believed in a world where you wouldn't have to bribe children to save a, a penguin. The me today knows different. I can only wish I could go back. Sometimes you just have to shoot hands at penguins. Mm -hmm. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium and the kids lo lo load onto the buses, Hugo pulls me aside. Ah. Hey, Dad Tasmo, thanks so much for hel helping out today. You're a lifesaver. You, you shot those penguins really good with your hands. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Hey. Let me take you out next time to make it up to you. You like cheese boards? Uh, I'm all about cheese boards. Great. Well, I gotta go make sure the kids didn't steal anything else. See you around. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm, I wonder where the panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. What you up to tonight? Just doing some just doing some homework. How was the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any any of the employees saw. You got you got to go in, into the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo, though. Hmm. I'm surprised he helped complete a covert op. He's usually kind of a... Kind of a what? Kind of a stick in the mud. He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. Alright, too much adventure for me today. I'm gonna go rest my eyes. Ah. You mean take a nap? There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. <laughs> All right, let's see how we did our, our date with Hugo. S. Not bad. Uh, I mean, Hugo's, Hugo seems nice enough. He's a little bit vanilla for me, but uh, definitely pretty nice guy. Okay, so we have Two dads left to date. We have Brian and Joseph. Um, I'm probably probably gonna do Brian next. I think I'm kind of I think I'm gonna save Joseph for last. Um, yeah. So uh, next time we'll be dating Brian, and we will see you then.